I go out and, and, and we're about to go on air and the reporter's about this tall, so he steps up on a box so that we're the same height. And he says, uh, are there any messages you want to get across today before we do a live interview? And this is before the war. And my boss in, in my office, who was in 06, uh, had been displaced at this point by a White House staffer, 32-year-old 32 32 year guy from uh, Texas, small town in Texas as well. They gave him a uniform and a, a made-up rank of a two-star general. So he didn't actually wear military rank because he wasn't actually in the military, but he, he walked around in a uniform, kind of a paramilitary information Nazi. Um, he got his messages straight from the White House. He would give us the message of the day uh, early that morning for this which we're going to go out and we're going to tell the press. So he would say, okay, message today is ties to terrorism, WMD or uh, uh, regime change. For example, great, that's the message of the day. I go out, Fox News guy asked me, are there any messages you want to get across today? So, yeah, sure, Jim said uh, WND ties to terrorism regime change. Okay, great, here are the questions I'll ask you. He scripts the three softball questions. We go on live. He asked me these three softball questions. I sell the war to the American people, give them the reasons that we're going to invade. He pats me on the back and thanks me for my service. We're squeezed in between an American eagle and an American flag and two different tickers that are going down here so you can barely see our face as if we're just right in between all the red, white, and blue graphics. Um, and then it goes off to some other news story. He says, thanks a lot for your service, and, and we're out of there. Now, here's the problem with that. Using young guys in military to speak to the press is something they should do. I admire our military for being so open to the press. I admire that they actually invited reporters to be in all the units as they were invading Iraq. I mean, it really speaks to what their intentions are. You know they're not planning a My Lai massacre when they got an NBC cameraman in the squad. So it's, it's almost like a national consciousness with them. And I don't think any military in the history of the world has ever been so open as to say to the press, let's put reporters in all the units, we'll give you unfettered access. I admire that. But here's the problem. When you ask a military spokesperson, a young guy in uniform, before the invasion, why are you going to invade Iraq? He shouldn't be out there giving answers that the president needs to be giving. The military spokesperson should only say how it will be done. Because the real answer about why the military invaded Iraq is because the president ordered it to. The only answer I can honestly give is on why you will invade Iraq. We will invade Iraq if the president, the commander in chief, gives us an order to on behalf of the nation. That's why we'll invade Iraq. Now, why he gives that order, that's politics. And that's someone that someone in a suit behind a podium at the White House needs to be up there explaining. And this is important, and here's why this is important. Because when the young guy in uniform is out there giving the reasons that we're going to invade, the reporter knows that his bosses back in New York don't want to see him be critical of a young guy in uniform. We support the troops even if we don't support the war. And his boss knows that the people in America don't sit, want to see this reporter ask tough questions of the young guy in uniform. So it's not going to be a critical interview. In this relationship between me and the Fox reporter, he's not going to be cynical, which is the press's job. He's not going to ask tough questions, which is the press's job, because I'm the young guy in uniform and no one wants to see him pick on me. But little did the American people know that the White House had someone working right in our back office giving us the reasons to sell the war. Now, if someone at a suit, in a suit at a podium at the White House puts out the reasons that we're invading, now the reporters will ask tough questions. Now the reporters will step in, or at least supposed to. They didn't in 2003, but at least supposed to play the part of a professional cynic. So this was a problem in the way we were being used. I argued it with uh, Jim, the White House staffer, that this is not what you use military spokespeople for. I lost the argument, and as a, a good trooper, I did what I was ordered to do. Now, I was never asked to lie. In my entire time in the military, I was never asked to lie. I was never asked to even shade the truth. But I have to say, looking back on it, I regret what I did. And I wish I hadn't done it. I wish I hadn't said, this is beyond, this is out of my lane. This is beyond what I should be talking about. Um, because now I, I feel in some way personally responsible for the situation we're in. I know it wasn't just me, and I probably played such a minuscule part, you know, who knows. But I still feel a personal connection. I still go back to Iraq frequently to ask the tough questions, as a reporter should, to try to find what the right answer is. I, I, 
Iraq's the kind of place with a lot of answers and not a lot of solutions. But I get ahead of myself. Um, I was really frustrated with Central Command, and, and so in 2003, I was shipped back to the States to my job. That, that weird job I told you about, I was actually representing the Marine Corps in Hollywood. So, you know, I, I, I went from this weird, made-up environment in Doha where we acted like we were close to war, but we really weren't. We had a $200,000 soundstage to put out the U.S. messages to sitting on the set of JAG every day. It was going from bizarre to bizarre.